Kelly. Welcome to Attitude. Hi. This is exciting. Hi. What a group. Yeah, a lot of energy today. Really? That's great. We can use it. You know, we're going to show you. We finally, they finally got us one of these. Yeah. This is our Attitude three. tip sheet. Which, which camera do you want to do it on? Number three. three. No, right over here. Okay. This is the thing that we... We talked about uh, at every show, and we explained in the beginning when we dialed the number and showed you how to do it. This is the this is the thing that you get in the mail. And let's open it up, and you'll see. Okay, and these are the, some of the things you see. There's a there's a um, a letter in this one from D. And Linda's was in last one. You right. probably saw that. Right. And we talked about antiquing, uh, right? Uh, some tips I had given on antiquing for those of you who want to indulge in stuff of these, right? And, and also um, the kitchen. The in kitchen. the kitchen, you have your recipe for um, Jean Claude Baker's right. crepe Suzette. Crepe Suzette. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, it, it's fun. And we get so many letters on something specific that you see on the show, and this way, all the stuff that we talk about in a week, mm -hmm. you get in a, in a complete tip sheet, so you don't have to sit in front of the TV and start writing it's stuff impossible. down. Impossible, you know. And also, it's two dollars. Right. But if Which, you think about it, twenty-five cents for a stamp, right. fifty cents for the envelope, the paper, whatever right. else, the pen, the ink, right. no, right. the ink well. No, <laughs> this is not a car. <laughs> right, right. We're not talking car here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then to make the ink. No, <laughs> it's, it's just like going to go with right. It. And the octopus. Never mind. <laughs> um, but it sounds like a lot. But if you think about it, you're you're getting ten or twelve different items. Right. in the tip sheet, rather than sending for one for the recipe, one for thing, and it's the convenience of over the telephone. So, so write, write for them and let us know what you think. We and call uh, up and we could yeah. get it right here yeah. on our desk, but we just like it for the fun yeah, of it. for the fun of it. <laughs> right, <laughs> anyway. And then we have, today we have something else fun. Halloween masks are here. Yeah. And, and a dentist. A dentist who transforms mouths. It's really... Yeah. Yeah. Scary. Yeah, scary. Scary, stuff. scary. Right. Uh, on a serious note, we have a lady who's, who's going to be with us that actually went into a coma for nine days. This is an incredible and story. And she survived, and she says it's because of stress. Is that scary or what? That's scary. Yeah. For all us ladies who try and do it all, <laughs> be sure to listen to right. this one. Yeah. But then to bring us back to a lighter note, our favorite person <laughs> is here. The Bean Gourmet is here. Yeah. Him. They don't even like what he makes, the but they love him. <laughs> really? Our, our first guest would love the bean gourmet. Yes, he should well, have to invite him to stay. Yeah, and yeah. eat breakfast with us. It's a bean breakfast yes. thing today. Uh, our first guest gained national fame, and you will remember this, as the wacky, gun-crazy cop in the series, Sledgehammer. Funny. <laughs> but as a child, he says that the other kids thought he had a direct hotline to God because his father was a minister. But they were all wrong. He didn't they have one. Right. And more recently, he spent time in prison with Tom Selleck. It's not exactly what you think. Right. right. He was doing a movie there. <laughs> and he's going to tell us all about it. Please help us welcome David Rashi. <laughs> Been, been working in the halls, going up and down. They said to me, you are very nervous that you, who did Second City, and I can't believe that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, 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 well, you are know. Are you sure? It's, Is it the women? Is that it's it? a lot of women there everywhere. There are a lot women of women. I mean, I like it, but there are women producers and everything. See and anybody you're interested in? Everybody. You oh. know, I, I guess. One of those. Well, right. one of many of those. <laughs> That's just me. You have gourds here. I, I raise those. Did you? I, not these, but I do in my house. I, I, I happen to like gourds. Really? Okay. I know, it's shocking. It's no, shocking. I just love them. Are you a gardener? I, no, no, no. Yeah, sort of. But I, they're, they're very beautiful. Now, this they one has beautiful. shellac on it, which I don't like. What you do know? you do with a gourd besides you, eat it? That's it. You don't eat it. You, you look don't at it eat and you them say, at all? Isn't that pretty? And then you look at the next one and you say, 
And look at that one. And all different. And that's it had really... one function other than that. No, no. Uh-uh. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you ate them, too. I thought it was like squash yeah, and everything. I've never eaten one. I just you like to look at them. You could not cut one of those up and eat them you in You probably. Maybe them? they're bitter. I really, I don't know, she okay? Almost <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I'm really oh, glad you brought this up. I don't know. <laughs> I do like them. You're a minister's son. I am a minister's son. Did yes. that make things... Difficult? <laughs> is, that the, is that the word for, is that difficult, the hand gesture? Yeah. I'm Italian. It's okay. <laughs> uh, no, well, I, um, you know, I had a good time because uh, I learned a lot of things like music, you know, I was singing all the time. And, uh, you know, things, the things that were important in our house were, had to do with uh, the meaning of life and things, you know, those are the things we talked about because my father had to deal with people who were in trouble a lot and get up in the middle of the night and do all that. Um, and uh, all about nature, you know, he was a conservationist, my father, and very artistic. So the business world was not anything that was uh, real to us at all. We just didn't, you know, I'm not sure that Christianity and capitalism really work together yeah. anyway. I don't yeah. really think they do. I, I know that's not no, you're supposed I, to say that, but no, I, think I think in the end right. yeah. it doesn't work too well. Yeah. How, how do you get from a minister's son thinking about all those things to being called rat catcher? Rat catcher? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that was Somebody second called, city. We got a lot of phone yeah. calls, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. A well, lot of people were calling us. Not many. No, I used to do, I did a character on Second City who, who uh, I started to talk, 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 talk like that, and, 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 and would we, 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 we stutter, but... And, uh, and he was, and there was, there was a rat catcher, and then uh, that's, that's where that came was from. Was that his occupation? No, there was a rat catcher came to my house. Oh. And, uh, because I had so many rats, they were having parties in my house and making noise, and I wanted to get rid of them. So I tried to get the gourds, yeah. No, I didn't have them at that time. No, you didn't. <laughs> but if you but did. those were, uh, uh, that was uh, a whole sort of different chapter in my life because, uh, you know, improvisational uh, theater is a lot different than oh, what yeah. I'm doing now because I, the difference is, you know, you, you have a script, yeah. you know, is when you do work on the stage and then in the... Uh, in, uh, movies and things, and when you improvise, you have none. And it really was quite a transition for me. I came to New York after being at Second City for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, the guys that I was with were like John Candy and Bill Murray and uh, um, Gilda Radner, and a lot of those guys, except for Gilda, who came to New York to do that show, went to L.A. We have some pictures. We, we, oh, my goodness. We went and found. There, this see, is your just life so you can see. That's, that's me. That's me. In the foreground, oh, that's yeah. That's me and John Candy Bill right behind him. Bill is behind John. Betty Thomas. Thomas. Betty Thomas. Right. Remember Betty Thomas from, from Hill, Street uh, Hill Street Blues? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's me. Oh. That's you. <laughs> and that's my hand. That's, that's the video. Now. Yeah. It's right now. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Fun. Fun at Second City. Fun at Second City. And was it more fun? Do you like being on stage more than than being the structure of a television or a movie? I uh, well, it's not that so much. It's just I think every uh, every particular. Um, uh, the situation is different. I mean, it's got a lot to do with the plays and with what, you know, the, uh, 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 the script. Yeah. And I've been very lucky with that. Like, I just finished doing Speed the Plow by David Mamet, who is a really a great writer and uh, loves words, and I like words, too. And he also is concerned with what's going on in the world. What are we doing here? What is this uh, human being? What is that? And why? And w how do we get along, and who is God, and why is he doing this to us, and is he doing anything to us, and yeah. uh, all these questions. Thought-provoking. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so I guess in a way I, I'm having somewhat more fun now because at Second City, you know, you improvised only as far as, you, as I could improvise, but when you get into the theater and film, you get to say words that other people, smarter yeah. than you say. Yeah. So when I could uh, do a part oh, written by David and Mamet. Okay. Oh, this is well, more. That's, that's doing words city. by someone dumber than me. That's me. That's another one. That's more Second City. Boy, John more Candy looked so young there. there. He and was. Bill Murray is on the left of the screen. Bill Murray, yes. And there's Tino and Sana to the right. He was a John Belushi's first partner when they got into improvisation oh, theater in Chicago. Yeah. Really? Oh, yes. What, are you married? Well, depends. <laughs> oh, sure. I'm are you married? Yes, I'm are married. Are you children? I have children. I have three children. I have... Uh, well, my uh, my daughter is a girl, and the two sons are boys. Right. And, uh, That's good. So I, it's worked out so far. It worked out quite nicely <laughs> like for you, didn't it? Yes. yes. And uh, we, we, I have a good... My son, August, the other night, he said... Um, he asked his mom... He said... They were talking about death, and she said, uh, Am I going to die? And she said, Yes, you are. And he said, Well, are you going to die? And she said, Yes. And he said, Well, who's going to die first? She said, Well, I think I will. And he said, No, no, no. I want to die first. Because when you're first... You win. Yeah, okay. 
So he got part of it right. He got right. some of that. He not completely, but he missed, he missed a little, little of it. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about working on The Innocent Man with Tom Selleck. Well, they didn't have a clip, no. right? So I brought a clip from the show myself. Did you? <laughs> this is uh, this is an actual clip from the show. Did you this use is, uh, this on Tom Selleck? No. That no. was on his underwear in jail okay. when he would rinse them yeah. out, right? Now okay. you told me that you played such show. a bad right. guy that the audience, when they see it, get up and cheer when you die. Well, that is true. Yes. That means you were good. Well, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, written by Larry Brothers, you know, and it was, uh, 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 it was a really fun part. I mean, it was uh, somebody who was really wild, and uh, I was really mean, and uh, <laughs> so no one could tell me to, like, don't do it that way, like the director, you know. Yeah. I'd say, I think I'm going to knock over this table in that scene, okay? Oh, fine, it's okay, okay, fine. <laughs> right. But uh, I did a lot of research, actually, for it. And here in New York, a guy named uh, uh, Joe Lisi is a captain now, and uh, Richard Plotzer, his partner. And uh, they took me out. There's a place on City Island where they train narcotics cops. Really? And they have a mock-up of, uh, of an apartment, sort of a cheesy apartment. And behind the flats, there is a catwalk so that the uh, supervisors can walk around and see these first-time uh, rookies uh, walk through it. And they have a guy go in, and some of the uh, policemen pretend to be druggies, you know, uh, the bad guys, and they say, we'll make a deal, we'll make a deal. And they go back and they tell their, you know, the, the rest of the group, and they come in with their guns and they do a mock-up of a real raid. So I got to see you know, really what they do and how they do it. And they, they really helped me quite a bit. And you that. also filmed it in a real prison with real prisoners, right? Yeah. Some was filmed in a real prison. And uh, actually on the set, you know, you, you hear sometimes about how um, in a drug raid, a, a cop is shot uh, by another cop. Yeah. And what happened to us was we, there is one scene in which uh, there's a big drug raid. And uh, the, when we did, of course, we were nervous as actors, you know, because we yeah. got to get it right, got to get our lines and all that kind of stuff. And we busted down that sewer and said, put, get up here, come on, put them up, put them up, get your hands up, get your hands up, cops, cops, cops. And in the script, um, my partner is supposed to say to me, look out, because there's a guy who's going to shoot me. And he says, look out, boom, and he shot me. Oh. Oh, so my, there you the nerve, it. You're so, so nervous. Yeah, sure. He shot me. Thank well, then, God, course, for real. But we're glad you made yeah, it here. I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay. Thanks, David. We rode him for Good a long luck. Time. Go see him. Yeah, it's, it's very him. exciting. Oh, no. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Coming up, what we all want to know about life before it's too late from a woman who knows. Come back, please. <laughs> to this woman she is a single mom she holds down a high pressure job still feels guilty about her divorce and is trying to sustain a healthy relationship with the man she loves and obviously has no time for herself well if you can relate you should probably pay especially close attention to our next guest what I have just described to all of you was her life back in 1984 right before her body decided that physically and emotionally it had had enough. In self-defense, her body shut down, literally. She fell into a coma. Miraculously, she survived, and after nine days, she awakened, but not as the woman she once was. Here to share her story is the author of Wake Me When It's Over. Please welcome Mary Kay Blakely. Hi, Mary Kay. Hi, nice to have you here. Thanks so much. Tell everybody what happened to you during the coma. I mean, what did you feel during that, that nine-day period? Well, obviously, I had no sense at all of the passage of time, so I was unaware that I was in a coma. I thought I was just having the longest dream of my life. Yeah. Um, the first stage, actually, um, and probably this is when I was most critically ill, um, it was very pleasant. It was very peaceful. I had no sense at all of being in touch with my body. And I did experience the euphoric dreams that other people have described from the near-death experience. Right. Then there was another period of time where I was very conscious of sounds in the room. Uh, my sister Gina flew to New York immediately from Chicago and spent the whole nine days talking me out of this coma. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my friends... Do you think that made a difference? Different. Oh, absolutely. I really think that it did. I was very aware of her sound and very aware of her touch. And it was comforting. And my sister is really witty and really brilliant and 
you know, she just came to fight this thing. It was her notion that the medical staff could take care of my body. Yeah. So she really imagined that it was her job to reach my yeah. mind. Yeah. And I do think that there's a connect connection between the mind and the body. Um, I do think that all of us, uh, you know, if, a, if an embarrassing thought can cause your face to turn red, yeah. a dark, prolonged grief probably can cause other stresses on your life. And I think that was the case with me. You really believe that all the stress you were under, which is, which is sort of the stress that a lot of women are under in varying degrees or situations, okay. do you think that something like that can trigger the body to just literally shut down? I really do, and I have to be very careful about how I say that, because yeah. there was a newly ca diagnosed case of diabetes in that same period of time. But all of these things were autoimmune disorders, when the body's own defense system turns against the self. And when I was reconstructing that period of time for the book, I looked back and I thought, how did you get up every day when you were feeling so terrible all the time? I was feeling exhausted, you know, I was battling multiple infections as the result of a surgery. And I think the most dangerous thing that happens for women is we forget what normal feels like. I think so. It's like you I mean, I just felt we all go, this is how I yeah, am. <laughs> we all go through life, we're tired. We, we never get to really get to right. us. There's too many people right. pulling and tugging and needing us and oh. we kind of just take ourselves and push it aside. Right, and for me there were children and there were multiple editors in New York I had to please and there was, you know, an ex-mate who I was still, you know, hoping to shepherd through the pain of divorce and there was a new relationship and I never would have given myself permission to sleep for nine days. Yeah. But that's essentially what happened. I mean, I keep telling friends that for the same amount of time and money it cost me to have a nine-day coma, I could have spent a whole year in Key West. <laughs> really? <laughs> and and enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. yeah. But we don't give ourselves permission to take that kind of break for no. ourselves. No, we think the whole world's going to fall down if we exactly. miss one appointment, which exactly. is just not true. It isn't. No. It isn't. How has it changed your life? Well, I really think that it wasn't just the coma, but the long recovery period afterwards, because it's really quite astonishing how devastating to the body a coma can be. I mean, already my limbs had begun to contract, because your mind is literally sending your body the message, you don't need it anymore. Yeah. You're going. Um, you're going. You're going goodbye. So yeah. I had a lot of weight to regain, and I had to, you know, relearn to walk, and I had to recollect the fragmented parts of my brain. Um, so that whole period took a long time, and I think that the three weeks that I spent afterwards in the hospital looking at my life um, were the most productive three weeks. I mean, nobody who sits in a hospital bed who's had an experience as catastrophic as this yeah. says, gosh, you know, I wish I had spent more time at work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you no. never think no. that. Ever. What you think is you look at your life and you think, you know, my relationships are so important to me, and why aren't I taking more pleasure in them? Why am I... You know, being so yeah, driven by the should. The list. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. am I so driven by the shoulds, and why am I not choosing to take more control over my life? So I really think that it gave me permission to say no. Maybe because it was, you know, so visible to my family and friends that I had collapsed. Yeah. The changes afterwards were much easier to negotiate. I mean, I remember when um, all of the floral arrangements started arriving in my hospital room after word got out that I had awakened. And all of them were from editors to whom I still owed deadlines. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. you've been hauled back to life because you left without finishing all of your deadlines. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Do you, are you afraid <clears throat> that it will happen again? I was. I, I really guess. was for a while. I felt enormously vulnerable because I never knew this kind of thing could happen. Yeah. Um, and I was feeling like if I didn't see it coming, could it happen again? But I've learned a lot since then. I've certainly learned to listen to my body. And as I look back in retrospect, there were plenty of warning signs that I was, you know, in deep trouble. And I ignored them because I thought, you just have to grit it out. You have no choice here. You yeah. have to keep running this yeah. treadmill. And now I think, yeah. I have choices. Mary Kay, thank you for sharing your story. It's remarkable. Everybody, <laughs> listen to your body, please. We'll be right back in just a moment. Yes, truly does make magic. A fine artist and a painter, she creates masks that transform the wearer into fantasy creatures. Really, from Aztec goddess 
and Fairy Queen to Black Fox or Phoenix. The masks are truly astounding works of art. The name of her company is appropriately titled Nothing Real. Please welcome the creative June Harvey. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Welcome. June, how did you, the artist, the painter, the creator, get into making masks? Well, it started in the Pacific Northwest. I was working with a group of wild, crazy Indians, North American Indians. <laughs> My favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a theater group called the Red Earth Theater Company, and they employed me as a costume and mask maker. So that's uh, how I started in this whole business. These are exquisite. Thank you. Tell us what they are. What do they make? Well, um, some, this particular one, Phoenix, is made out of a thermoform plastic. And this is used in the medical supply industry. What you do is you make a plaster mold, and then you take this particular fabric, and you put it in boiling water, and it becomes very limp, and mm -hmm. you have three minutes to work with it, so you have to work very fast, really? and you mold it over the plastic Into the mold. shape? Into whatever shape, yeah. But then you have work. as much time as you need to paint it? <coughs> uh, yes, and what you can do is you can continue working with it. It's a combination of resins, plastic resins, and also canvas. Is this Medusa? This is Medusa. Beautiful. So and you work a great deal from myth mythological... Yes, yes, I'm very interested in mythology, in particular um, Aztec mythology yeah. mm -hmm. and Celtic mythology. What is this one? Uh, this is Victor Vortex, and uh, <laughs> I, I, started, I live on a lake in, in the country, and uh, it's kind of appropriate that I started to make my own mythological oh, characters that, that resemble aquatic figures. So yeah. this looks rather amphibious. It does. Yeah, if you'd yeah. say, you know, the spinal column yeah. of the front. Come on, so, June, let's go over okay. here. And I want, we want them to see all of these because they're so wonderful. Tell us quickly Bring what them right this through. Is. Bring yeah. us right Bring through. Just tell us what they are. Okay. Well, in, in terms of characters yeah. of mythology, this would be Pan, right. uh -huh. the god of, of the shepherds, and uh, he ran after young nymphs all right. the time, or right. they ran after him. He was him. half man, half goat. Half, half goat. goat. Half goat. And goat. half yeah. man. Right. right. And uh, this is Bacchus, the god right. of wine, right. one of my favorites. And this is uh, the harvest king. Beautiful. What's and uh, I just call her Madame Butterfly. It's, it's a Madame Butterfly um, facade, you know, and, and design. Let's go over here, June. Now, what is this? Oh, this is lovely. Um, the white goddess Tara, T-A-R-A, -A, from yeah. Tibetan mythology. And uh, the Tibetans believe that it's a white goddess who is the redeemer or the savior of humankind. That's the woman that's going to help us pull Matriarchal. through. Matriarchal. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Back to the goddess. Mm -hmm. What is this one? Uh, this is little Tinkerbell over oh. here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I call and it Lila. I started to work with a lot of floral arrangements this mm -hmm. year. And people seem to like, to like, them. like them for display, for window display Isn't and that, advertisements. That's beautiful. This is gorgeous. Now, these are true. Now, you do custom make I custom masks, plus you do masks for uh, uh, social life. Uh, yes, right. for commercial use, and right. in particular, um, advertising and, and display right, right now. A lot right. of people are asking right. for them for that. Tell me what these are. I call this Betsy, and uh, that's because I like Betsy Johnson very much oh, as a right. designer. Oh, right. We did, too. And she loved that. That's like her hair. Yeah, yeah, great. Is, yeah so it's similar yeah. to some of her sure. fun yeah. designs, so I, I named this in honor of Betsy Johnson. And this is and all hand-painted? Yes, it's hand-painted, yeah, acrylic okay. paper. What you have to do is apply gesso first, then the, the acrylic paint, and it has to be crinkled by hand, so there's yeah. some, some time. And who and is this? this? Well, who's this? Uh, that's Aztec, red Aztec goddess. Oh, gosh, look at these. That's gorgeous. What kind of prices would these be, June? This um, is also Aztec. Most of my pieces run anywhere from $50 up to 200 for something more elaborate. Yeah. But yeah. that's very inexpensive now, you know, considering the We work. call them masks that you just, you know, you would wear, but these are works of art. You could hang these on your walls. Exactly. Do a lot of people do that? Yes, and, and that's one this. of the sales points of, yeah. of now what for, I'm doing. Obviously for Halloween, this is oh. perfection. This is <laughs> or someone who's into tarantula. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what do you call this? Uh, that's Lady Spider. Of course. Lady Spider. June, uh, regarding the transformation element in the idea of the mask, is this also to help us remember that there is potential always for change? Yes, I, I think that that's uh, what the mask was created for. Mm -hmm. It's a very important tool. It was used by the Greeks, by the shaman, by the medicine men. Mm -hmm. 
And good reminder. It's a reminder of transformation, the fact that we can become wherever we really want to be. That yeah. that That's creative and potential a fun way to do it, too. Yeah. yeah. They're beautiful. Now, what are these called, June? I love uh, This her. is Lady of the Red Rose, oh. and the White Goddess is over here. Just and beautiful. these are favorites. They're fun yeah. pieces. Look Women like this. these because they make them look very pretty. And oh, Lord. They're good for parties and mass balls. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, you must be big in New Orleans. Jimmy, at the Mardi Gras. like me in New Orleans. Look at that. <laughs> June Harvey, absolutely beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so June. much for Thank being here. Happy Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Bing Gourmet is back. Yes. that according to two recent studies, there's something better for beating and reducing cholesterol than Othran? Yes, I do. Do you know what that is? Yes, I do. What is that? Beans! beans. Right? <laughs> right. It's beans. It's right. beans. Here to start your day and ours is our Attitudes Bean Gourmet, <laughs> and he's going to show us how to cook a bean breakfast. Welcome, Tom Chatter. <laughs> First thing in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, we're up right and early, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Oh, oh, while you two were yeah. sleeping in this morning, what did I do? You, you were made making us beans. But first, I went out and got us the morning paper. Oh, you won't believe really? how hot beans are now. This is our morning paper. I just picked this up. <laughs> uh, the Sun, of course. We read this. Linda reads this every we morning. We read the classic. Take a look right down here. Baked bean. Baked bean bath cures arthritis. So claims this man. <laughs> This man is named Mr. Beanie. Oh, my. Yeah. We don't know if it really cures Look arthritis. Look at those legs. Wow. Look at those, yeah. <laughs> we Ooh. don't know if it cures the arthritis, but it does leave a nasty ring. That's um, about all we know right that now. That wasn't the most appetizing no. thing we wanted to do. No. <laughs> Beans for breakfast? Absolutely no. A lot of people are reaching for Opran first thing in the morning because they hear that the soluble fiber in Opran can reduce cholesterol, which right. is true. But what a lot of people don't know is that beans are better for you because they contain more soluble fiber than oat bran, and it, it in turn reduces the cholesterol. But, you know, choking them down at 7 no. in the morning could be tough. Uh, but beans are versatile. You can use them in any recipe, and today I'm going to make the greatest recipe in the world, kidney bean pancakes. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Kidney beans are my Absolutely. favorite. Absolutely, of course. It, it will be your favorite. After. Should we get started here? Oh, yeah. sure. I'll mix. All, All right. right, you want to mix? Yeah, yeah. Oh, mix. great. All right, here's a bowl for you. <laughs> All right, you come right over here. All right, good. Well, okay, okay, very All right, good. Now. All right, now, the first thing we do is... Are these hot? Yes, they are. Those are hot. Those are all... As I lean on it. <laughs> That's right. First thing you do is you take two cups of a pancake mix. Now, when you're using a pancake Thank mix... God. I'm. Yeah, I know, it's easy. This is simple and easy. Anyone can do this. Now, I simply get the pancake mix where you can add water. So you're going to have to go by the recipe that's on your box. My recipe calls for the pancake mix. Right. No right? egg? No egg. No, just add water. My pancake mix. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. One and a half cups of water. Okay. Yeah, you can get these things out. Just makes them so simple and easy. There they right. are. Well, now, Already. you keep stirring that, all right? Now, while okay. you're doing that, Linda, are you okay. ready to help me out here? Sure. Well, now, I've had you mash beans in the past, right? Yes. I've had you pound beans, massage beans. Today, we're going to take these kidney beans, and we're going to mince beans. Okay. All right. Now, these kidney beans are great. They're 7,000 years <laughs> old. They were... These particular oh, no. ones? <laughs> I know. No, no, no. Kidney beans originated 7,000 years ago in Mexico. These are probably about a week old. Oh, good. Okay. Now, this right here, this item here is called the rolling mincer. It's got five rolling blades. Right. So as it rolls along, it minces. It's from France. This is from the same people who brought up the guillotine, so this should work. <laughs> okay? So, now you take they this one. They make chairs, too. Right. Do they? <laughs> yeah. You can pound chairs against these. All right, go ahead. This? Absolutely. Keep going. Right, uh huh. I'm just chopping these. You're just beans mincing up. those. Oh, right. what a great little gadget. Isn't little that great? Gadget. Where do you yeah. get this little gadget? Do you want to try it? I got one for you. Sheet? Uh, you get these at, at gourmet stores. Really? Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. This is a good Isn't little it great? Look at Look this. Look how fast that goes. You could do this with anything, this mincer? Anything. Yeah. Well, well, don't cut my finger. <laughs> You're right. Should there be lumps in here? No, there shouldn't be. Apparently. Shouldn't be lumps? No, no, no. No, 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 don't use a spatula. That's for the... 
you got to wait till we'll that is for later. No, you don't take the lumps out. You, you use the spoon and you she stir. Doesn't cook. You don't too. cook? Okay. No. Oh, geez. You, you right, should eat. Now what? All right. The next enough? thing you do is that is perfect. Perfect. Okay. These beans are great. A lot of fiber. No fat. Hardly any fat in these beans. Low in calories. Mm. Just put them all right mm. in there. Go ahead. Just put them in. I'll stir them up. No problem. Don't Very smash good. them too much, Steve. No, okay. don't smash should them too I much. Should I fold them right. in? No, no. Let, let me help you out, okay? Go ahead. Why don't you take your station right over here at the, um, at the frying pan. These are hot. Pan. Linda, right. you want to join us right over here? Um, okay. Our utensils are hot, too. Well, they're supposed to be hot. <laughs> no, okay. but they're like flying Ooh. on the heat. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that that's Ooh. bad. Okay. okay. What right. we're going to do now is we're simply Ooh, going to cook. that's bad. <laughs> this is like burning. <laughs> All right. I know that. Now, Linda, here, do you want me to pour... We want me to pour this for you? Yes. Yeah, Go I don't ahead. want you to pull a shoulder pad. Yeah, no. Let me handle this. <laughs> okay. Now, there you go. <laughs> now, you have an admirer here. Uh, oh, yes, I know. Now, right over here is for you. Okay. Now, one thing. Oh, before you grab that, don't ever grab a, uh, uh, a handle with your hand. What you have no? to do is, no, you get a pot holder. Of course, around here, there are no pot holders, only old shoulder pads of Linda's. <laughs> There's about, no, there's about 20 of these out in the frog room. They breed. <laughs> these things breed. What do you need these okay. for? Just go in and get them. Take them oh. out. <laughs> All right, now, now, now you know what? that these are almost ready to, to uh, flip. That's very funny. When, when they start to uh, bubble up around right. the edges, you see that? Yeah, And they bubbling. begin to get dry, right. Now, when that happens, see, these are ready to flip. All right, now, before we, uh-oh. Before, these are smelling well, very good. Okay, before What's on beans? the pan? <laughs> Do we uh, put anything? I messed that one up for you. Okay, now before That's you right. flip that, right. what you need to do is get out of here. Don't wreck confidence. mine. It's all in the wrist. Just act like you bring it up, stop your hand abruptly, like it's coming up against the oh, ceiling. No. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. We're going to starve at the rate this is going. You try it. Do you want to try yours? Listen. Ready? Could I cook another? <laughs> Come on, Let's go. Come on. One. Flip that, baby. Yeah. Oh! Linda, tonight you're sleeping on the couch. Okay. Be so, that's a, you did a be great careful, job. Be careful. Shall be we careful. taste? We, we yeah. don't need the fish. Let's yeah. go ahead Mine's and taste. Mine's a little wet. Little burnt. Yeah. Look yeah. how good these look. This is when they're all done and when these flip them all nice and uniformly. Let me get another I'm fork for you. I'm getting a sunburn on my face from this stove. Here, let me feed you. This is like breakfast in bed. Now, do you put syrup on this? Yes, there is syrup on this. It's all over it. Mm -hmm. They look good. Yeah. Here you go. You want a little, little bit? You can... You want Give me, me to another fork? Yeah, you you take you're it afraid first. of me ever since the bean burgers. <laughs> All right, let no, me go ahead. Okay. I like this. Is it good? Mmm, this is absolutely. Is it? Come on, dig in. Uh, what do you dangerous. think? I wonder what you think. She's the bean lover. We need a little more. Um, this is delicious. Syrup. Yeah, uh, it's delicious. Thank and we're you. beating cholesterol in breath, right? Isn't that great? Right. I this shouldn't talk with my mouth open. Are you kidding me? Don't. You gotta be kidding me, Linda. Here. Try the one D just made fresh. Just, just a little taste. You're Italian. Go ahead. What do you think? Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. This is great. Oh, it is, it's super. This is delicious. It's super. I Thank you. I love it with You know what I mean? I know it's No, it's delicious. I think if you have to eat the beans, it could be great. You no, know, the flavor, the flavor of the bean adds is great. Well, who needs prunes when you can eat this? <laughs> You're hurting me. It's true. No, you? <laughs> no, not no, the bean corn, not the bean corn. No. You're invincible. Oh, thank you. Mm, no, thank you, thank you, mm, well, thank you. You really eat this you for breakfast all the time. No, you don't. Coming You're up right. next. Admit it. <laughs> Trying to put on a Halloween smile that was there. The toothberry. you love scary stuff. If you want to make the very worst impression on Halloween, you, you must do something about your teeth because they're just too gorgeous, right? No. So it's all about teeth. Remember right. this. And if you don't have rotten teeth, diseased gums, you know, these incisors that come down like the vampire teeth and everything, what is a decent goblin supposed to do? True. It's True. A, this is a now, problem. Now, recently, a renowned New York cosmetic dentist, right. Jeff Golub. Right. Golub. Right. Golub. Golub. I never say his name right. Golub. Forgive me, Jeff. 
He joined us in the makeup room in the back, and he wanted to create some really scary stuff for us, right? Now, Jeff is kind of famous. He's created the look on Broadway for Les Miserables. Right. And just look at these pictures. This is the before, right. and here's the after. <laughs> and also, we remember his work in the movie Eat and Run. Look at this. And then run. Ooh. 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 Yeah. All right. As you're about to see, Jeff's technique is just really very simple. He uses wax, he shapes it, and then he, he colors the teeth for your basic Halloween scary look. <laughs> for a more elaborate effects, he actually can make even a mold of your teeth. Well, he came to see us yeah. the other day, and he really put some bite into our Halloween yeah. smile. Take Let's a look. Take a look. That's good. I love it. Good. Ugly. Good. Ugly. Good. Good. Ugly. Good. Give her a little more rancid garbage. What do you think of these teeth? I like these teeth. I think they're me. They're definitely. I think they're me. They're so ugly. I they're me. They're a little off-center. Do you think I we should like move that. them a little? This is for comedy. Oh, well, then it's But perfect. we don't want to do comedy for Halloween. Oh, we don't? No, no, no. We want to be scary. Make oh, so these aren't like... appropriate. I think, though, for our purposes, they would look better if they were a little yellower. How about... Yeah, and... And green. pointier. And pointier. Ah, oh, you look like a vampire! <laughs> Definitely point. I drink a lot of tomato juice. What? I drink a lot yeah, of tomato juice. You drink a lot of tomato juice? I don't have blood on them. Oh, Transylvania! <laughs> You can, get the wax. Really? you can get the wax from Gouda cheese. Yeah. yeah. Other types like Bombay cheese. Oh, that's a cheese. good idea for our mom. What a Halloween. good thing to do. Just great. Well, where do you think I got this wax? Oh, great. Sort from Gouda cheese. Sort of, Gouda right. cheese oh. wax, and you can put it on the teeth. Put can, it on the teeth. Can you teeth. put it on your kids' teeth? Is it safe? Absolutely. It's sort of a pitiful vampire. Can I take a picture of that? Sure. Put those, put those fangs in there. <laughs> Look at you, D. It's Do you look hippie or what? <gasps> look how that changes your whole face. What is this you're doing? This is your gum. Rancid gum? Tracy, let me have an explorer. Oh, what's that? Nothing. It's just a carver. Columbus? Oh. What? A carver. It's like you're rotting. Oh. Oh, look, I think this is a good theory. You put that on you, and your own teeth look fantastic. They look fine, don't they? You know what I mean? It's like they a comparison perfect. shopping. Oh. Look how pretty you look. All right, look. now, can we measure this tray, please? You just put your head back and open your mouth. Right. Perfect. We're taking a mold of your mouth now. Because what Patience. I did was merely a Patience. wax prototype, right? Patience. That was a prototype. Right. That was just to give me an idea of what would look fun. And I'm going to make that to custom fit so that you can just insert it. It will just snap in and, and snap out. And how do you make it? We make it out of bonding material. Th these are actual... How long does it take? It'll take me a few days. This, these are colors of bonding, do you see? Yeah. And I can set this with a light and make it actually hard, like plastic. So just like Lauren Hutton, as you mentioned, it'll be a plastic insert that will custom fit your teeth. This is great. You'll be able to walk around. Can I give you any time? You can wear, wear it on the subway. Time. So I could wear it for Halloween. That's why we're doing great, this. Great, great, great. Okay. Get red. Scazzy on the wall. Exactly. I need a little see. green Let number. You and Harvey made us these masks, and oh. we look absolutely gorgeous for Halloween. Now, well, this is how we're really going to look at Halloween. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> Let me eat your neck, little girl! Oh. I love oh, this I, stuff. Isn't this ugly? Isn't it great? Don't we look great? What is on yours? I don't know. I think he drew a little... Uh, insect. A little insect. Her little it? goblins on my teeth. Skeletons. Skeletons. Is that, that what it like is? A, I look like I'm in some mountain It movie. looks like you haven't used Crest in a long time. <laughs> I look you like know? I should have been in Deliverance. Let me see. Oh. Let me see. <laughs> oh, I know a guy that looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> these are... Oh, God. Oh, I'm, too. I'm wearing these on Halloween until I come to your door. Give me some candy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Thank you. You okay. love this stuff. I, I love this. this stuff. She loves this. She'll be wearing it all day. At your fingertips. Stay tuned. I'm drooling now. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. I just drool, Bill. I know. Interesting. Do you do know you, what they are? Do you know what these are? Fingernails. Fingernails. Can you believe it? Well, they're yeah. not real nails, but they're but nails they're to be applied. Acry acrylic. Yes. Yeah, they're now. We were walking <laughs> home, uh, or walking here actually, from, from lunch, lunch the other day, and we saw these in a window at a neighborhood nail salon. It's called Design Nails. It's right on Broadway, right here in Astoria, New York. So we said we got to show this to everybody on Attitude. Let's show you now for Halloween. Here's a Halloween nail. Let me see. See, we have them on toothpicks, so you can see that's how it would actually look on your finger. Can you imagine? Now, what's show this th one, Dee? That looks like a tropical island oh, nail. Oh, yeah, look here. Can you see? Now, someone actually paints these. Yeah, the manicurist. A and I guess you can have a different scene or design on every nail. Look they at look a little peculiar, but... Lynn, this is good okay. for you. A black tie nail, oh, a tuxedo nail. Look, this, this goes with funny? my outfit. Look. Oh, that does. Look at that. I think you should put them on. Well, no, you're sure. Right. That with my teeth, that would be a vision. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that'll be good. Then the 14th, oh, God, for this week. Um, they, they're $3 a piece, right. and they're acrylic, yeah. and they're fun. And they really are little works of art. Now, do they have to be this long? Can you put them on shorter nails? I, mean, can I guess they down? could be shorter, but I think this is really the basic length. These are, this is our attitudes nail. Alan, can you see that? This is the little attitude nail that she made for us. Yeah. Funny. Look at that. Now, you're pro you probably can get these in your neighborhood, too. Most of these manicurists are very, very talented. Terrific. Well, anyway, it's just, just fun. An idea. Yeah. For those of you who are bored at home, go have this done. And when All we right? see something, we can't resist, so we had to show you. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye-bye. Receive the Lifetime Attitude Tip Sheet with information on today's show, call 1-900-773-4040. Today's show and issue number is 5. The cost of the call and tip sheet is $2. To avoid ordering duplicate tip sheets, please check your issue number before placing the call. If you would like tickets, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Attitudes Tickets, 3412 36th Street, Astoria, New York, 11106. Or give us a call at area code 718-706-3575. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. 2 Central, meet model and actress Patty Darbonville on Attitudes. Coming up on the Lifetime Afternoon movie, after a man loses his wife to illness, he loses his sons to social workers. Mark Harmon fights the system to save his family in the touching true story, After the Promise. Next, right here on Lifetime. doing a movie there, <laughs> and he's going to tell us all about it. Please help us welcome David Rashi. working in the halls, going up and down, they said to me, you're very nervous that you, who did Second City, and I can't believe that. 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, 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 well, you, Are you know. Are you sure? It's, it's, Is it the women? Is that it's it? a lot of women there everywhere. There are a lot women of women. I mean, I like it, but there are women producers and everything. Is anybody you're interested in? Everybody. You oh. know, I, I guess. One of those. Well, right. one of many of those. <laughs> That's just me. You have gourds here. I, I raise those. Did you? I, not these, but I do in my house. I, I, I happen to like gourds. Really? Okay. I know, it's shocking. It's no, shocking. I just love them. Are you a gardener? I, no, no, no. Yeah, sort of. But I, they're, they're very beautiful. Now, this they one has beautiful. shellac on it, which I don't like. What you do know. you do with a gourd besides you, eat it? That's it. You don't eat it. You, you look don't at eat it and them you say, isn't that pretty? And then you look at the next one and you say, and look at that one. And all different. And that's it has really no function other than that. No, no. Uh-uh. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you ate them, too. I thought it was like squash yeah, and everything. I've never eaten one. I just you like to look at them. You could not cut one of those up and eat them You're in a probably. Steam Maybe them? they're bitter. I really, I don't know, she okay? Almost <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm glad you brought this up. I don't know. <laughs> I do like them. You're a minister's son. I am a minister's son. Did yes. that make things... Difficult? <laughs> is, that the, is that the word for, is that difficult, the hand gesture? <laughs> I'm Italian. It's okay. Uh, no, well, I, um, you know, I had a good time because uh, I learned a lot of things like music, you know, I was singing all the time. And, uh, you know, things, the things that were important in our house were, had to do with uh, the meaning of life and things, you know, those are the things we talked about because my father had to deal with people who were in trouble a lot and get up in the middle of the night and do all that. Um, and uh, all about nature, you know, he was a conservationist, my father, and very artistic. So the business world was not anything that was uh, real to us at all. We just didn't, you know, I'm not sure that Christianity and capitalism really work together Jail. anyway. I don't yeah. really think they do. I, I know that's not no, you're supposed I, to say that, but no, I, think I think in the end right. yeah. it doesn't work too well. Yeah. How, how do you get from a minister's son thinking about all those things to being called rat catcher? Rat catcher? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that was Somebody second called, city. We got a lot of phone yeah. calls, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. A well, lot of people were calling us. Not many. No, I used to, I did a character on Second City who, who uh, I started to talk, talk, talk like that and, 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 and would we, 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 we stutter, but, and, uh, and he was, and there was, there was a rat catcher, and, and that's, that's where that came was from. Was that his occupation? No, there was a rat catcher came to my house. Oh. And, uh, because I had so many rats, they were having possible aquatic figures, so yeah. this looks rather amphibious. It does. Yeah, if you yeah. say, you know, the spinal column yeah. of the front. Come on, June. Let's go over okay. here. And I want, we want them to see all of these because they're so wonderful. Tell us quickly. Bring what them right through. Is. Bring yeah. us right Bring through. It. Just tell us what they are. Okay. Well, in, in terms of characters yeah. of mythology, this would be a Pan, right. uh -huh. the god of, of the shepherds, and uh, he ran after young nymphs all right. the time, or right. they ran after him. He was him. half man, half goat. Half, right. half goat. goat. Half goat. And goat. half yeah. man. Yeah. Right. And uh, this is Bacchus, the god of wine, right. one of my favorite. And this is uh, the Harvest King. What's and uh, I just call her Madame Butterfly. It's, it's a Madame Butterfly um, facade, you know, and, and design. Let's go over here, June. Now, what is this? Oh, this is lovely. Um, the white goddess Tara, T-A-R-A, -A, from Tibetan mythology. And uh, the Tibetans believe that it's a white goddess who is the redeemer or the savior of humankind. That's the woman that's going to help us pull Matriarchal. through. Matriarchal. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Back to the goddess. Mm -hmm. What is this one? Uh, this is little Tinkerbell over oh. here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I call and it Lila. I started to work with a lot of floral arrangements this mm -hmm. year. And people seem to like, like, them. like them for display, for window display Isn't and that, advertisements. That's beautiful. This is gorgeous. Now, these are true. Now, you do custom make custom masks, plus you do masks for uh, um, social commercial. Uh, yes, right. for commercial use. And in particular, um, advertising and, and display right now. A lot of people are asking right. for them for that. Tell me what these are. I call this Betsy. And uh, that's because I like Betsy Johnson very much oh, as a right. designer. Oh, right. We did. And she loved that. That's like her hair. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yes, yeah, so it's similar yeah. to some of her sure. fun yeah. designs. So I, I named this in honor of Betsy Johnson. And this is and all hand-painted? Yes, it's hand-painted yeah. acrylic paper. What you have to do is apply gesso first, then the, the acrylic paint. And it has to be crinkled by hand. So there's yeah. some, some time. And who and is this? this? Well, who's this? Uh, that's Aztec, red yeah. Aztec goddess. Oh. Look at these. That's gorgeous. What kind of prices would these be, June? This um, is also at... Most of my pieces run anywhere from $50 up to 200 for something more elaborate. Yeah. 
But yeah. that's very inexpensive now, you know, considering the We work. call them masks that you just, you know, you would wear, but these are works of art. You could hang these on your walls. Exactly. Do a lot of people do that? Yes, and, and that's one this. of the sales points of, yeah. of now, what for, I'm doing. Obviously for Halloween, this is oh. perfection. This is <laughs> or someone who's into... Tarantula. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what do you call this? Uh, that's Lady Spider. Of course. Lady Spider. June, uh, regarding the transformation element in the idea of the mask, is this also to help us remember that there is potential always for change? Um, I do think that all of us, uh, you know, if, a, if an embarrassing thought can cause your face to turn red, mm. a dark, prolonged grief probably can cause other stresses on your life. And I think that was the case with me. You really believe that all the stress you were under, which is which is sort of the stress that a lot of women are under in varying degrees or situations. Do you think that something like that can trigger the body to just literally shut down? I really do, and I have to be very careful about how I say that, because yeah. there was a newly ca diagnosed case of diabetes in that same period of time. But all of these things were autoimmune disorders when the body's own defense system turns against the self. And when I was reconstructing that period of time for the book, I looked back and I thought, how did you get up every day when you were feeling so terrible all the time? I was feeling exhausted, you know, I was battling multiple infections as the result of the surgery. And I think the most dangerous thing that happens to women is we forget what normal feels like. I think so. It's like, you I mean, I just felt we bad all and I go, thought, this is how I yeah, am. <laughs> we all go through life, we're tired, we, we never get to really get to right. us. There's too many people right. pulling and tugging and needing us, and oh. we kind of just take ourselves and push it aside. Right, and for me there were children and there were multiple editors in New York I had to please and there was, you know, an ex-mate who I was still, you know, hoping to shepherd through the pain of divorce and there was a new relationship and I never would have given myself permission to sleep for nine days. Yeah. But that's essentially what happened. I mean, I keep telling friends that for the same amount of time and money it cost me to have a nine-day coma, I could have spent a whole year in Key West. <laughs> really? <laughs> and, and enjoyed it a lot. That time. Yeah. yeah. But we don't give ourselves permission to take that kind of break for no. ourselves. No, we think the whole world's going to fall down if we exactly. miss one appointment, which exactly. is just not true. It isn't. No. It isn't. How has it changed your life? Well, I really think that it wasn't just the coma, but the long recovery period afterwards, because it's really quite astonishing how devastating to the body a coma can be. I mean, already my limbs had begun to contract, because your mind is literally sending your body the message, you don't need it anymore. Yeah. You're going. Um, you're going. You're going, goodbye. So yeah. I had a lot of weight to regain, and I had to, you know, relearn to walk, and I had to recollect the fragmented parts of my brain. Um, so that whole period took a long time, and I think that the three weeks that I spent afterwards in the hospital looking at my life um, were the most productive three weeks. I mean, nobody who sits in a hospital bed who's had an experience as catastrophic as this yeah. says, gosh, you know, I wish I had spent more time at work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you no. never think that. No. Ever. What you think is you look at your life and you think, you know, my relationships are so important to me, and why aren't I taking more pleasure in them? Why am I... You know, being so yeah, driven by the shoulds. On the list. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. am I so driven by the shoulds, and why am I not choosing to take? It's coming up against the oh, ceiling. No. There you go. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's great. That's great. We're gonna starve at the rate this is going. You try it. Do you wanna try yours? Listen. Ready? Can I cook another? <laughs> Come on, Let's go. Come on. One. Flip that baby. Yeah. Oh. Linda, tonight you're sleeping on the couch. Okay. That's a, that's a, you did a be great careful, job. Be careful. Shall be we careful. taste? We, we yeah. don't need the fish. Let's yeah. go ahead Mine's and taste. Mine's a little wet. Burnt. Yeah. Look yeah. how good these look. This is when they're all done and when Dee's flipped them all nice and uniformly. Let me get another I'm getting a sunburn on my face from this stove. Here, let me feed you. This is like breakfast in bed. Now, do you put syrup on this? Yes, there is syrup on this. It's all over it. Mm -hmm. They look good. Yeah. Here you go. You want a little, little bit? You can... You want Give me, me to another fork? Yeah, you you take you're afraid first. of me ever since the bean burgers. <laughs> All right, let no, me go ahead. Okay. I like this. Is it good? Mmm, this is absolutely... Is it? Come on, dig in. Um, what do you think? It. I wonder what you think. She's the bean lover. We need a little more... Um, this is delicious. Syrup. Yeah, uh, it's delicious. Thank you. And we're you. beating cholesterol in breath, right? Isn't that great? Right? I this shouldn't talk with my mouth open.
Are you kidding me? Don't. You better be kidding me. Linda, here. Try the one Dee just made fresh. Just, just a little taste. You're Italian. Go ahead. What do you think? Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. This is great. Oh, it is, it's super. This is delicious. It's super. I Thank you. I love it with appetini. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I know it's, no, it's delicious. I think if you have to eat the beans, it could be great. No, the flavor, the flavor of the bean ass is great. But who needs prunes when you can eat this? <laughs> You're hurting me. It's no, you? No, not no, the bean corn, man. No, not the bean corn, man. No. You're invincible. Oh, thank you. Mm, oh, thank you, thank you, dear. Oh, thank you. You really eat this you for breakfast all the time. No, you don't. Coming You're up right. next. Admit it. <laughs> Trying to put on a Halloween smile. That was Stare the Toothberry. You love scary stuff. If you want to make the very worst impression on Halloween, you you must do something about your teeth because they're just too gorgeous, right? No. So it's all about teeth. Remember yes. this. And if you don't have rotten teeth, diseased gums, you know these incisors that come down like the vampire teeth and everything. What is a decent goblin supposed to do? True. It's True. A, this is a now problem. Now recently, a renowned New York cosmetic dentist. Right. About teeth. Remember yes. this. And if you don't have rotten teeth, diseased gums, you know, these incisors that come down like the vampire teeth and everything, what is a decent goblin supposed to do? True. It's True. A, this is a now problem. Now, recently, a renowned New York cosmetic dentist, right. Jeff Golub. Right. Golub. Right. Golub. Golub. I never say his name right. Golub. Forgive me, Jeff. He joined us in the makeup room in the back, and he wanted to create some really scary stuff for us. Right. Now, Jeff is kind of famous. He's created the look on Broadway for Les Miserables. Right. And just look at these pictures. This is the before. Right. And here's the after. <laughs> and also, we remember his work in the movie Eat and Run. Eat look at this. And then run. Ooh. 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 Hey. Real, don't uh, they? Yeah. All right. As you're about to see, Jeff's technique is just really very simple. He uses wax. He shapes it. And then he, he colors the teeth for your basic Halloween scary look. <laughs> for a more elaborate effects, he actually can make even a mold of your teeth. Well, he came to see us yeah. the other day, and he really put some bite into our Halloween yeah. smile. Take Let's a look. Take a look. That's good. I love it. Good. Ugly. Good. <laughs> ugly. Good. Good. Ugly. Good. <laughs> Give her a little more rancid gobbles. What do you think of these teeth? I like these teeth. I think they're me. They're definitely. <laughs> I think they're me. They're so ugly. I they're me. Oh, they're a little off center. Do you think I we should like move that. them a little? This is for comedy. Oh, well, then it's But perfect. we don't want to do comedy for Halloween. <laughs> oh, we don't? No, no, no. We want to be scary. Make well, So these aren't like... appropriate. I think, though, for our purposes, they would look better if they were a little yellower. How about, yeah, and, and pointier. And pointier. Ah, oh, you look like a vampire. <laughs> Definitely point. I drink a lot of tomato juice. What? I drink a yeah, lot of tomato juice. You drink a lot of tomato juice? I don't have blood on them. Oh, Transylvania. <laughs> you, can get the wax, really? you can get the wax from Gouda cheese. Yeah. yeah. Other types like Bombay cheese. Oh, that's a cheese. good idea for our mom. What a good Halloween. thing to do. Just well, great. Where do you think I got this wax? Oh, great. Sort from Gouda cheese. Sort of, Gouda right. cheese oh. wax, and you can put it on the teeth. Put can, it on the teeth. Can you put it on your kids' teeth? Is it safe? Absolutely. It's sort of a pitiful vampire. Can I take a picture of that? Sure. Put those, put those fangs in there. <laughs> look at you, Dee. It's Do you look strong. hippie or what? <gasps> look how that changes your whole face. What is this you're doing? This is your gum. Rancid gum? Tracy, let me have an explorer. Ah, what's that? Nothing, it's just a carver. Columbus? Oh, what? A carver. It's like you're rotting. Oh. Oh, oh, look, I think this is a good theory. He puts that on. There you go. Oh, that's great. That's great. We're going to starve at the rate this is going. You try it. You want to try yours? Listen. Ready? Could I cook another? <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Flip that, baby. Yeah. Oh! Great 
great job. Oh, that's Sorry, great. I got a little cough Linda, out. Linda, tonight you're sleeping on the couch. Okay. Did it so, work? That's a, you did a be great careful, job. Be careful. Shall be we careful. taste? We, we yeah. don't need the fish. Let's yeah. go ahead Mine's and taste. Mine's a little wet. A little burnt. Yeah. Look yeah. how good these look. This is when they're all done and when Dee flipped them all nice and uniformly. Let me get another I'm getting a sunburn on my face from this stove. Here, let me feed you. This is like breakfast in bed. Now, do you put syrup on this? Yes, there is syrup on this. It's all over it. They look good. Yeah. Here you go. You want a little little bit? You, you want me, me to another fork? Yeah, you, you take You're afraid part. of me ever since the bean burgers. <laughs> All right, let no, me go ahead. Okay. I like this. Is it good? Mmm, this is absolutely... Is it? Come on, dig in. Uh, what do you dinner. think? I wonder what you think. She's the bean lover. We need a little more... Um, this is delicious. Syrup. Yeah, uh, it's delicious. Thank you. And we're you. beating cholesterol in breath, right? Isn't that great? Run. I this shouldn't talk with my mouth open. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Don't. you got to be kidding me. Linda, here. Try the one D just made fresh. Just, just a little taste. You're Italian. Go ahead. What do you think? Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. This is great. Oh, it, it's, it's super. This is delicious. It's super. I Thank you. I love it with appetite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I know it's good. No, it's delicious. I think if you have to eat the beans, it could be great. No, the flavor, the flavor of the bean adds is great. Well, who needs prunes when you can eat this? <laughs> You're hurting me. It's true. <laughs> no, you? No, not no, the bean gourmet. Not the bean gourmet. No. You're invincible. Oh, thank you. Mm, oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm, well, thank you. You really eat this you for breakfast all the time. No, you don't. Coming You're up right. next. Admit it. <laughs> Trying to put on a Halloween smile. That was the hair of the Tooteberry. I love scary stuff. If you want to make the very worst impression on Halloween, you you must do something about your teeth because they're just too gorgeous, right? No. So it's all about teeth. Remember right. this. And if you don't have rotten teeth, diseased gums, you know, these incisors that come down like the vampire teeth and everything, what is a decent goblin supposed to do? True. It's True. A, this is a now, problem. Now, recently, a renowned New York cosmetic dentist, right. Jeff no, okay, don't smash okay. them too I much. Should I fold them right. in? No, no. Let, let me help you out, okay? Go ahead. Why don't you take your station right over here at the um, at the These are hot. Right. Linda, you want to join us right over here? Um, okay. Our utensils are hot too. Well, they're supposed to be hot. <laughs> no, okay. but they're like flying Ooh. on the heat. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Get that one. that's Ooh. bad. Okay. okay. All what right, we're gonna now. do now is we're simply Ooh, going to cook. That's bad. <laughs> this is like burning. <laughs> All right. I know that. Now, Linda, here. Do you want me to pour? Do you want me to pour this for you? Yes. Yeah, Go I don't ahead. want you to pull a shoulder pad. Yeah, no. Let me handle <laughs> this. Okay. Now, there you go. <laughs> so, you have an admirer here. Uh, oh, yes, I know. Now, right over here is for you. Okay. Now, one thing. Oh, before you grab that, don't ever grab a, uh, uh, a handle with your hand. What you have no? to do is, no, you get a pot holder. Of course, around here, there are no pot holders, only old shoulder pads of Linda's. <laughs> There's about, no, there's about 20 of these out in the frog room. They breed. <laughs> these things breed. What do you need these okay. for? Just go in and get them. Take them oh. out. <laughs> All right, now, now, now you know that these are almost ready to, to uh, flip. That's very funny. When, when they start to uh, bubble up around the edges, you see that? Yeah, And they bubbling. begin to get dry, right. Now, when that happens, see, these are ready to flip. All right, now, before we, uh-oh. Uh, these before, are smelling well, very good. Okay, before What's on the pan? <laughs> Do we oh, put I, should, I messed that one up for you. Okay, now before That's you right. flip that, right. what you need to do is get out of here. Don't wreck confidence. mine. It's all in the wrist. Just act like you bring it up, stop your hand abruptly, like it's coming up against the oh, ceiling. No. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, that's great. Start. That's great. We're gonna starve at the rate this is going. You try it. Do you wanna try yours? Listen. Ready? Could I cook another? <laughs> Come on, Let's go. Come on. Dee. Flip that, baby. Yeah. Oh! Sorry, Linda, tonight you're sleeping on the couch. Okay. Did it so, work? That's a, you did a be great careful, job. Be careful. Shall be we careful. taste? We, we yeah. don't need the fish. Let's yeah. go ahead Mine's and taste. Mine's a little wet. Burnt. Yeah. Look yeah. how good these look. This is when they're all done and when Dee flipped them all nice and uniformly. Let me get another I'm getting a sunburn on my face from this stove. Here, let me feed you. This is like breakfast in bed. Now, do you put syrup on this? Yes, there is syrup on this. It's all over it. Mm -hmm. They look good. Yeah. Here you go. You want a little, little bit? 
You, you want me to taste it? Fork. Yeah, you, you taste you're it. You're afraid first. of me ever since the bean burgers. <laughs> All right, let no, me go ahead. Okay. I like this. Is it good? Mmm, this is absolutely... Is it? Come on, dig in. Um, what do you think? I wonder what you think. She's a bean lover. We need a little more, um... This is delicious. Syrup, yeah. Uh, it's delicious. Thank you. And we're you. beating cholesterol in breath, right? Isn't that great? Run. I this shouldn't talk with my mouth open. Are you kidding me? Don't. You better be kidding me. Linda, here. Try the one Dee just made fresh. Just, just a little taste. Bean breakfast yes. today. Uh, our first guest gained national fame, and you will remember this, as the wacky, gun-crazy cop in the series, Sledgehammer. Funny. <laughs> but as a child, he says that the other kids thought he had a direct hotline to God because his father was a minister. But they were all wrong. He didn't they have one, wrong. he said. And more recently, he spent time in prison with Tom Selleck. It's not exactly what you think. Right, right. He was doing a movie there. <laughs> and he's going to tell us all about it. Please help us welcome David Rashi. Been, been working in the halls, going up and down. They said to me, you are very nervous. That you, who did Second City, and I can't believe that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, 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 well, you are know. Are you sure? It's a, Is it the women? Is it's a it? lot of women there everywhere. There are a the lot women of women. I, mean, I like it, but there are women producers and everything. Is anybody it? you're interested in? Everybody. You oh. know, I, I guess. One of those. Well, right. one of many of those. <laughs> That's just me. You have gourds here. I, I raise those. Did you? I, not these, but I do in my house. I, I, I happen to like gourds. Really? Oh, I know, it's shocking. It's no, shocking. I just love them. Are you a gardener? I, no, no, no. Yeah, sort of, but I, they're, they're very beautiful. Now, this they one has beautiful. shellac on it, which I don't like. What you do know. you do with a gourd besides you, eat it? That's it. You don't eat it. You, you look don't at eat it and them you say, all? Isn't that pretty? And then you look at the next one and you say, and look at that one. And all different. And it has really no good. function other than that. No, no. Uh-uh. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you ate them, too. I thought it was like squash yeah, and everything. I've never eaten one. I just you like to look at them. You could not cut one of those yeah. up and eat them you in a probably. Steam Maybe them? they're bitter. I really, I don't she know, okay? Almost <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just glad you brought this up. I don't know. <laughs> I do like them. You're a minister's son. I am a minister's son. Did yes. that make things... Difficult? <laughs> is, that the, is that the word for, is that difficult, the hand gesture? <laughs> yeah. I'm Italian. It's okay. Uh, no, well, I, um, you know, I had a good time because uh, I learned a lot of things like music, you know, I was singing all the time. And, uh, you know, things, the things that were important in our house were, had to do with uh, the meaning of life and things, you know, those are the things we talked about because my father had to deal with people who were in trouble a lot and get up in the middle of the night and do all that. Um, and uh, all about nature, you know, he was a conservationist, my father, and very artistic. So the business world was not anything that was uh, real to us at all. We just didn't, you know, I'm not sure that Christianity and capitalism really work together yeah. anyway. I don't yeah. really think they do. I, I know that's not no, supposed I, to say that, but no, I, think I think in the end right. yeah. it doesn't work too well. Yeah. How, how do you get from a minister's son thinking about all those things to being called rat catcher? of this coma. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my Do you think that made a difference? Different. Oh, absolutely. I really think that it did. I was very aware of her sound and very aware of her touch. And it was comforting. And my sister is really witty and really brilliant. And, you know, she just came to fight this thing. It was her notion that the medical staff could take care of my body. Yeah. So she really imagined that it was her job to reach my yeah. mind. Yeah. And I do think that there's a connected connection between the mind and the body. Um, I do think that all of us, uh, you know, if, a, if an embarrassing thought can cause your face to turn red, yeah. a dark, prolonged grief probably can cause other stresses on your life. And I think that was the case with me. You really believe that all the stress you were under, which is, which is sort of the stress that a lot of women are under in varying degrees or situations, do you think that something like that can trigger the body to just literally shut down? I really do, and I have to be very careful about how I say that, because yeah. there was a newly ca diagnosed case of diabetes in that same period of time. But all of these things were autoimmune disorders when the body's own defense system turns against the self. And when I was reconstructing that period of time for the book, I looked back and I thought, how did you get up every day when you were feeling so terrible all the time? I was feeling exhausted, you know, I was battling multiple infections as the result of the surgery, 
And I think the most dangerous thing that happens to women is we forget what normal feels like. I think so. It's like you, I mean, I just we all and I go. This is how I yeah, am. we <laughs> all go through life. We're tired. We we never get to really get to right. us. There's too many people right. pulling and tugging and needing us, and oh. we kind of just take ourselves and push it aside. Right. And for me, there were children, and there were multiple editors in New York I had to please, and there was you know, an ex-mate who I was still, you know, hoping to shepherd through the pain of divorce and there was a new relationship and I never would have given myself permission to sleep for nine days. Yeah. But that's essentially what happens. I mean, I keep telling friends that for the same amount of time and money it cost me to have a nine-day coma, I could have spent a whole year in Key West. <laughs> really? And, <laughs> and enjoyed it a lot. That time. Yeah. yeah. But we don't give ourselves permission to take that kind of break for no. ourselves. No, we think the whole world's going to fall down if we exactly. miss one appointment, which exactly. is just not true. It isn't. No. It isn't. How has it changed your life? Well, I really think that it wasn't just the coma, but the long recovery period afterwards, because it's really quite astonishing how devastating to the body a coma can be. I mean, already my limbs had begun to contract, because your mind is literally sending your body the message, you don't need it anymore. Yeah. You're going. Um, you're going. You're going, goodbye. So yeah. I had a lot of weight to regain, and I had to, you know, relearn to walk, and I had to recollect the fragmented parts of my brain. Um, so that whole period took a long time, and I think that the three weeks that I spent afterwards in the hospital looking at my life... Um, yes. Yeah, I don't ahead. want you to pull a shoulder pad. Yeah, no. Let me handle <laughs> this. Okay. Now, there you go. <laughs> now, you have an admirer here. Uh, oh, yes, I know. Now, right over here is for you. Okay. Now, one thing... Oh, before you grab that, don't ever grab a, uh, uh, a handle with your hand. What you have no? to do is... No you get a pot holder. Of course, around here, there are no pot holders, only old shoulder pads of Linda's. There's about, no, there's about 20 of these out in the front room. They breed. These things breed. What do you need these okay. for? Just go in and get them. Take them oh. out. <laughs> All right, now, 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 you know that these are almost ready to, to uh, flip. That's very funny. When, when they start to uh, bubble up around the edges, you see that? Yeah, And they I'll begin blend. to get dry, right. Now, when that happens, see, these are ready to flip. All right, now, before we, uh oh, oh. These before, are smelling well, very good. Okay, before, What's on the pan? <laughs> do we oh, put I, anything? I messed that one up for you. Okay, now before That's you flip right. that, right. what you need to do is... Get out of here. Don't wreck confidence. mine. It's all on the wrist. Just act like you bring it up, stop your hand abruptly like it's coming up against the oh, ceiling. No. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, that's great. To... That's great. We're going to starve at the rate this is going. You try it. Do you want to try yours? Listen. Ready? Could I cook another? <laughs> Come on, Let's go. Come on. Flip that, baby. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Good job! Wait, it, it's an omelet. <laughs> no, it's Can I tell you something? I only flip omelets, and the pancakes turn into an omelet. Isn't that great? You did a great job. Oh, that's Sorry, great. Sorry, I got a little cup Linda, Linda, tonight you're sleeping on the couch. <laughs> okay. Well, that <laughs> that's a, you did a be great careful, job. Be careful. Shall be we careful. taste? We, we yeah. don't need the fish. Let's yeah. go ahead Mine's and taste. Mine's a little wet. A little burnt. Yeah. Look yeah. how good these look. This is when they're all done, and when Dee's flipped them all nice and uniformly. Let me get another I'm getting a sunburn on my face from this stove. Here, let me feed you. This is like breakfast in bed. Now, do you put syrup on this? Yes, there is syrup on this. It's all over it. Mm -hmm. They look good. Yeah. Here you go. You want a little little bit? You, you want me to another taste fork. it? Yeah, you, you take You're it afraid first. of me ever since the bean burgers. <laughs> all right, let no, me go ahead. Okay. I like this. Is it good? Mmm, this is absolutely... Is it? Come on, dig in. Um, what do you think? It. I wonder what you think. She's the bean lover. We need a little more... Um, this is delicious. Syrup, yeah. Uh, it's delicious. Thank and we're you. beating cholesterol in breath, right? Isn't that great? Run. I this shouldn't talk with my mouth up. Are you kidding me? Don't. You better be kidding me. Linda, here. Try the one Dee just made fresh. Just, just a little taste. You're Italian. Go ahead. What do you think? Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. This is great. Oh, it, it's, it's super. This is delicious. It's super. I Thank you. I <laughs> No, it's delicious. I think if you left off the beans, it could be great. You no, know, the flavor, the flavor of the bean adds is great. Well, who needs prunes when you can eat this? <laughs> You're hurting me. It's true. No, you know.